Hello, I'm Bob Harris. Concrete forming is probably one of the most important considerations for a successful concrete application. It starts with uh, choosing the right thickness, in this case of our timber, and here we've used a 2x6 uh, for a thickened edge. Uh, some people prefer a 2x4, but it really depends on what you're pouring. Anything that's load-bearing, say that's going to get vehicular traffic like a, a driveway, we go ahead and use a 2x6. I like pouring a little bit thicker. I find that it helps reduce or eliminate cracking as opposed to only pouring three and a half inches thick. Now with the forms, what is paramount is that you make sure that you have a sufficient amount of slope, meaning you don't want the water after you've stamped to hold on there in bird bath. It's unfortunate, I've seen some beautiful, beautiful stamp work. The color's perfect, the texture is perfect, but it's all for nothing because the forms weren't set properly and you see a big bird bath right out in the middle of the slab. So what is the proper amount of slope? Well, it really depends on the texture of your stamp or your stencil that you use. The old general rule is a quarter inch to the foot and that was really established for curb and gutter. And what I mean by that, for every one foot, you drop it a quarter inch. Okay, so for stamps, we usually use somewhere in the vicinity of about one eighth of an inch per foot. So in eight feet, that would be one inch of drop. On some of the more aggressive textures, we will go ahead and adapt to the quarter inch per foot. So that's probably one of the most important considerations is that the forms have the sufficient amount of slope. In addition to that, what's important is that on some patterns, you need to make sure that your forms are set square. Okay, and what I mean by that is that this is a true 90 degree. And what we uh, like to use is what we call a diagonal. And I'll take a tape measure measurement from this corner to that corner. And then I'll have the tape measure from this corner to this corner. You should have corresponding or the same measurements to make sure that this uh, square or rectangle is in fact square. If you have a driveway that maybe is a two or three car garage that has jog-ins and you can't use a diagonal like this, what we use is called the 3-4-5 method. And you can use that uh, concept un into an indefinite number by doubling it. So from 3-4-5, and what I mean is measure over here three feet, measure over here four feet, and for this to be a true diagonal 90 degree intersection, you should have a five foot measurement across. You can double that, six, eight, ten. 12, 16, 20, depending on the size. So remember, square your forms on most of your stencil and stamp patterns. Here we have what's called an upright stake, okay? And if you're using a stamped concrete pattern, one of two things. You either want to drive the stakes down flush with the top of the forms, and if that's not an option because the subgrade is uh, too compacted or it's a very dense subgrade, you might want to consider using uh, a sawsaw saw, saw or a jigsaw or a handsaw and cut the stakes off flush so you're not fighting the stakes when you start your stamping process. So this stake is des designed to hold the form up and down or to your elevation. And then this stake is what we call a brace stake or a kicker stake. And the only function of this stake is to hold the form from the pressure of the concrete pushing out. So as you can see, forming is uh, a lot more than just throwing the forms on the ground and, and going to town uh, with your concrete.